property investors make up the largest portion of offshore buyers in Australia. But they're now facing difficulties in getting loans. The big banks have introduced tough new laws which restrict lending to those without a local income. And as thousands more apartments are completed in the next few months, analysts warn some buyers will be forced to walk away. Emily Stewart reports. <music> Chinese businessman Fen Lin is in Melbourne for a pharmaceutical conference, but is taking advantage of a stall selling real estate. Melbourne CBD is the key location, so convenient to everything, and close to the University of Melbourne and RMIT University. Mr Lin already owns one apartment in Melbourne, now he's looking for another. He believes it's cheaper especially when it compares to Beijing, Shanghai and Guangzhou cities. Many agree with Chinese buyers making up the biggest group of offshore property investors in Australia, spending $24 billion between 2014 and 2015, according to the Foreign Investment Review Board. Government restrictions mean most purchase new developments largely off-the-plan apartments. You can find everything from here. Real estate agent Yang Li regularly sets up stalls at China-related events around Australia. Half his clientele is from Asia. Potential investors are able to see apartment development plans and even walk through them with virtual reality goggles without even leaving the hotel. 80% of the investors who, uh, who invest in Melbourne properties, they didn't come to here. They just trust uh, Australian, uh, the government, trust, trust the law. They reckon it's a, a proper, you know, um, uh, economy here. So uh, let's recently come to invest here. Only 20% they actually come to here to um, just look by them, themselves. So, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for attending. Most buyers get finance from Australian banks. Often they don't want the Communist Party to know exactly what they own. And Chinese residents are only allowed to take $50,000 out of the country each year. In the last couple of years, uh, Australian uh, property market is really, really hot uh, in the world. But uh, I think from end of last year and early of this year, uh, just pull over a little bit. I think the reason is due to the, the bank uh, policies. The big four banks have all introduced tough new borrowing rules and refused to lend to foreign property buyers without domestic incomes. State governments in New South Wales, Victoria and Queensland have also introduced new surcharges and taxes. Whereas before they might used to take overseas income as part of their allowance for paying off the loan, a lot of banks have said no, we're only looking at domestic income. Uh, so, so there are things that, that that um, are making things difficult for, for Chinese buyers. Mortgage broker Marshall Condon provides finance for development projects, including for Chinese buyers. So in the last couple of months, there's certainly been an impact. Uh, the changes have probably occurred over the last quarter. So there's a lot of developments we've dealt with recently who uh, that the purchasers weren't able to obtain finance. Mr Condon says private lenders based in Australia are filling some of the gaps. It ranges from you know, family offices that have high net worth clients that have you know, maybe a few million dollars that they would like to, to lend out. Um, so there's not a really a, a large supply of money, but then we've also got um, you know, private lenders who have sourced their money either onshore or offshore um, and uh, are offering products through a, a private capacity that way as well. For now, even though the lending options are more expensive, with interest rates of up to 13%, analysts say it's still cheaper than losing a 10% deposit. A lot of these things um, you know, are combined together and they should have a negative, you think would have a negative impact on, on Chinese and overseas demand in general. And with a lot of supply coming online in the next few months, Marshall Condon warns some buyers may break their contracts. Yeah, we might see a, a few more fallovers and people not settling. You know, in saying that, like I said, what we're, what we're hearing in the market at the moment is there's probably 50% that have been you know, a bit of a concern. But for now, there's still demand for new purchases and real estate agent Yang Li is hoping to sell at least 100 properties at this conference. <laughs>